Good morning. Welcome to everybody here in the sanctuary. Welcome to those of you who are watching online. We're delighted to have you with us here today. I'm Tom Finger, the chair of the Staff Parish Relations Committee, and it's my pleasure to be able to welcome to our church family, Pastor Bo Burke Owens and his wife, Caroline. And I'd like to have both of them come out here for a moment. Those of you who have, are familiar with our Methodist tradition of rotating pastoral assignments understand that uh, episodically, <laughs> and usually too often, pastors are rotated. We are really fortunate in this spinning of the wheel <laughs> uh, that has assigned Reverend Burke to us for the indefinite future. We're thrilled to have his wife, Caroline, here with us. I would ask that everybody who has a name tag, please remember to put it on for the next several weeks so that they can get to know us. Yes. We will get to know them at the series of meet and greets that has been scheduled. If you have not signed up for one of those, please do so on the patio. Please do not be shy about introducing yourselves later this morning. Their bios have appeared in the Friday news and insights and other places. But I will simply say they are coming here from St. Helena Methodist Church. They have been up in wine country for several years. This area is entirely new to them. So please don't be shy about recommending favorite places, favorite activities. We're thrilled to have you here. We want you to feel a part of this church family as quickly as possible. Pam? Thank you, Tom. Thank you so much. Thank you, Caroline. It is a joy and an honor to be here. I've got my own. And uh, thank you for the wonderful welcome we've received so far. We look forward to getting to know you all better, to serving here at God's pleasure for as long as we possibly can, to bring vitality and hope and unity and as much love and grace as God will allow us to bring into this perfect sanctuary and share it with all of Silicon Valley, which Lord knows needs it. <laughs> so God bless you all and thank you for everything. Looking forward to getting to know each of you. Good morning. I have several announcements in the life of our community. After the worship service, all are invited to our welcome potluck luncheon out on the patio in honor of Pastor Burke and his wife, Caroline. And as Tom mentioned about the meet and greets, uh, see me or Carol Coomer on the patio to find out uh, how to sign up for a meet and greet, a small group gathering to get to know uh, Pastor Burke and Caroline better. The Wednesday upstream service is taking a summer break starting this week, and it will resume on August 9th. We have three picnics in the park scheduled July 13, 20, and 27. Those are Thursdays from 6 to 7.30 at the East Meadow Grove in Mitchell Park in Palo Alto. It's a wonderful, relaxed fellowship time, and you're encouraged to bring neighbors, friends, visiting relatives, and Alan Wood is bringing his water rockets on the first picnic. July 13th. There's a sign-up sheet out on the patio where you could volunteer to grill the entree or bring a salad or a dessert. Okay. Now, please stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship. Lord, just as you have welcomed us when we were strangers with no home, just as you have taken us in when others said no, we ourselves seek to welcome those who have come to worship and praise your holy name. We welcome you this morning in this place 
to sit down and be present with us. Let us worship God. Buenos dias. I will invite all the kids, please come forward. We have Avia back. Hi, Avia. Welcome back. Come on, guys. Can you sit right more in the middle, please? Thank you. Can you just a little more on this side? Thank you. All right, I want to, something I want to share with you. I don't know if you know these little guys right here. They're, they have a big eye, just like mine. <laughs> these guys call Lucas, and they have, we have green, you can pass it, see. We have purple. We have blue. You can just pass it in that way. Red. Or 
orange. And finally, we have the light blue. OK. Let's put it right here. So what is fun about the lookies? I will tell you a story. That day, when I was at home, I was a little upset and sad. But then David said, Dad, let's make some lookies. And I said, what is lookies? He is these little guys. He's like, all right. Let's go and get all the materials. And then we start just painting the lockies. And then we put the eyes of the lockies. And David was very specific about the colors. And after we finished, I have so, so much joy in my heart because David and Anne and my wife, we were working hard to do the lockies. And then you know what was the more fun part? That I have a lot of joy in my heart was that David put all the lockies around the house and we had to find it. <laughs> and we have time to find it because David will convert like a little monster. <laughs> and he find, if he finds us with all the lockies, he will just take us. So it was a lot of fun making the lockies. So I will put it right here in a moment. That reminds me the Bible it says in Psalm 30 that sometimes we have bad days, right? But God will bring joy to our heart. And then we can be happy and have joy. So today we're going to sing a song about joy. So I will invite you to stand up a little bit. I will invite Teacher Pam to help me. And I will ask you to hold this for me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Not that too much. Like this. There you go. Smile. More. More. There you go. That's perfect. So this song is called I Got the Joy. I put the microphone here so you can. If you know the song, you're more than welcome to sing along with us. I got the joy, 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 down in my heart, where? down in my heart, down in my heart. I got the joy, 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 down in my heart, down in my heart, to stay. I got the joy, 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 down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart. I got the joy. I got the joy, 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 joy down. Where? Where? I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. Amen. All right, let's pray. Thank you. Just stand up like that. One hand up. Like a stretching and Touching the sky. The other hand, take a big breath. We close our hands. Thank you, Lord, for the joy in our hearts. Thank you for all these kids. Thank you, God, because your presence is here with us. Amen. All right, you can go back to your seats. Woo!
Thank you for that beautiful anthem, and thank you for your great faith and spirit. It's now time for prayers of the people, and uh, since this is my first time doing this, I'm, if I'm doing it wrong, just shout out. <laughs> so I believe it's time to call on each of you to offer a joy or a concern or prayer that you'd like to offer up, that we can offer up in prayer. And Pastor Gerardo will come around with the mic if you have something to offer up. So please, speak from your heart. What is God telling you needs to be said and shared with the congregation of faith? I would like to give, I would like to give prayers of thanks for the um, work, the healing work that God is doing as Nancy um, and um, Patty both recover. I've seen them both recently, and they are looking much better than I had ever dared hope. So thank you, Lord, for the healing that's being done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of Ukraine, that their lives may be brought to peace, their country may be brought to peace, and your will be done there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Just like to say first and foremost, welcome, Pastor, to you and wife, Carolyn. We pray for wisdom, insight, endurance, patience, and anything else that the Spirit feels that you and Carolyn need to help shepherd us through this season. Also would like to pray for the broken hearts in, I believe it's North Carolina, two were killed in a dispute with 25 others wounded. We just ask the Spirit to mend broken hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I just want to thank you for your warm welcome. It's wonderful to be here. And I really appreciate all, that you're, all the efforts for welcoming and just want you to know that. So thank you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yes, I pray for the healing of Pat Brown in New Zealand. She's the sister of uh, Dick Taney here. And um, yes, that's it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. First of all, welcome, sir. I want to say a prayer for the veteran who sleep under the bridge and all over the street of the United States. Thank you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I'd like to offer up prayers to all of this church and all of this community, those that are suffering deeply and are living by your grace, Lord, and basically nothing else. But especially, I would say, for those who seem to have everything and yet maybe have an empty heart. Those who long for your grace and your touch in their lives, Lord, and don't even know how to ask for it. Those who need your spirit and your love to touch them and bring them in connection with others. Please, Lord, help us all to be not only better people, but closer to the souls that you gave each one of us when you created us out of your love and manifested us from the same stuff that you are made of. Help us to live a life more like Jesus, more like the Christ, that the Holy Spirit may guide us and lead us onward always. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Any other prayers to offer? All right. For today's pastoral prayer, we are here in community, in faith, in love, in grace. All of us relate to countless others, families, friends, community, those we know and those we do not know at all. We are expected to serve our social network, our common family, to the very best of our ability to be faithful and compassionate, patient and wise, humble and kind. This is what God and Christ ask us to do, to be the best we can be so that creation keeps its balance, its harmony, its wondrously elusive grace. I ask that we continue to each contemplate our responsibilities in this life and that we take them seriously so that, we do, so that what we do and how we act, when we give or take, and how we forgive is top of heart and mind. For each of us are leaders in our lives. Each of us have untold influence on many others, whether we admit it or not. Each one of us has a central role to play in this world, not because we are more deserving or talented or special than someone else, but simply because God made us as his children. And as the children of God, we are expected to follow the example of our Father, For God loves us for who we are, wonderful, confusing, creative, beautiful, and at times more than a bit crazy. So for this reason, as any parent knows who truly appreciates and loves their child, God sees us that we are worthy and valued, often in spite of our best efforts to alienate our eternal parent and ourselves from who and what we truly are. Be the one you would like to be. Give wholeheartedly. Love abundantly. Remember that what we enjoy here is grace, for which we do little to deserve its many gifts, but that we are given because God loves us and wants us to be creative and joyful and fully engaged in all the wonders that this life has to offer. So, Thank you, Lord, and may your peace and love be with us always. And if you'd stand as you're able as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated.
It is now time to contribute our tithes and offerings. We are grateful for every gift to do God's work here at First United Methodist Church of Palo Alto. You may put a check or cash in the offering plate, mail a check to the church, use the Ministry One app on your phone, or donate by clicking through the giving page options on our website. Please join me in the offering prayer, after which the ushers will come forward. Mighty God, you have poured down on us all manner of gifts and blessings. The ledger of our lives is so overwhelmed with your goodness that we struggle with how small our offerings to you seem in comparison. The gospel reminds us that not even the smallest act of mercy and compassion, a cup of cold water, will go unnoticed by you. Give us the eyes to see those in need, the ears to hear those who cry for justice, and the hearts to comfort those hurting and grieving. If we all were to offer a cup of cold water, the world would be flooded with compassion. We ask this in Christ, our rock and our redeemer. Amen.
Psalm 30. I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord, my God, I call to you for help, and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Sing the praise of the Lord, you, his faithful people. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay in the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, when you favored me, you made my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. I cried for mercy. What is gained if I am silenced, if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothe me with joy, that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord, my God, I will praise you forever. Good for for I love Magdaudol, we hear Pong Pong in Toya by me, Same, Tolmo Fulu. Same to Noah. Teu Frahiki koe eiki, he quoke fusi hakeau. Penaikai teke toku hokungai firi, ke luki iateau. Eiki koku otua, neu tau tapatu. Peneke faito oau. Eiki quoke fra ha ere, haki hokulau marie me he tesi. Miate ki nautolu o ku hifo ki he luo. Pe kuo ke ui mai e kumo ui. Hiva saame ki a sihova a ene kaulotu. Fakamalo ia hono ongo ongo top tapu. He koe kemo a e fuoloa o ene tuputama ki. Ka ko ene ofa o ku lau mo ui. E ha ue fiafi nai a tangi ki tau mohe. Kai pongi pongi rewa, koi vavai. Ka ko au i heku tuu maa riena a kurea. E i kai te ue i au o ta engata. I ho o fa e si hova nā ke ngauhi hoku mo unga ke kau kaua. Nā ke fufu ho fofonga nā ku pupu tuu rewa. Ka koe eiki nā ku tautapa ki ai, pe au whai e ku hū ki a atonai. Koe hā hakoloa e mau me hoku toto, me hā aku alu hifo ki he luo. E atu e he e fū hā whakawhetai, te ne whakahā ko a ho o whai mooni, whanongo eiki pe ake ofa mai. E si hova, hoko koe ko hoku tokoni. Kua ke ririu e ku tangi lau lau, koe mea, keu mea, keu mea ai. Kua ke vete hoku taua ngā a, o noo aki ai whie whia lahi. Koe uhia ke hiva ki a fiona, e hoku langi langi, o oua tāka, e oua tū kua. E si hova ko hoku otua, te u whawhetai ki a koe, o taengata e meni. Just checking to make sure. Oh, yeah, okay, I'm on. <laughs> Thank you for the scripture reading. That was wonderful. So, let's see. 
I am here to serve this church, its people, by God's direction, by the power of the Spirit, by the love of Christ. Now, filling that role in our daily world, it's the bishop, acting bishop of our California Nevada Conference of the United Methodist Church, Bishop Sally Dick, and our district superintendent, Samuel Young, who have assigned me here, appointed me here. But really, the whole point of the appointment system is that it is the spirit working through the church that brings the appropriate pastor to the appropriate church and the appropriate church to the appropriate pastor. So I'm feeling pretty good about that right now. <laughs> I see this incredible church, this sanctuary that was built six decades ago or so, and a church that's been in this setting for well over a century and a half. I see people who've given their lives to this church, some younger, some older, but people with a great love and appreciation for this community of faith and what it brings into their lives, into their hearts, how it reminds them of God's place in their lives, how it reminds them that the Spirit is always with us, even though there are days and weeks and sometimes months when it doesn't seem like you can find the Spirit, the Spirit is always with us. When I was fairly young, as young as some of the younger ones that were up here earlier with Pastor G, I felt this call from God. I wouldn't have identified it in that way, but I did. But I was raised by a wonderful family, but a family that had no appreciation for religion or spirituality. They were avowed atheists. So it took me a long time to get to the point of feeling confident and not having any sense of hypocrisy in entering the ministry. Because that is death to the ministry. When someone says something and they don't believe it. Or their own crisis of faith is so difficult that they can't serve any longer. So I come to you with a strong sense of my faith and a strong sense of my connection to God in spirit and a wonderful desire to be an agent for God's love and grace in this world. And so with your support, with your help, with your willingness to communicate with me so that we have an ongoing conversation about how we do these things and what it looks like and what part of each of us plays in it, I look forward to doing that here. This space, this wonderful sanctuary that I did, had not seen until... I guess it was the end of February, early March, when I first came here to interview with the Staff Parish Relations Committee. I was blown away. And those who have only been here a couple of times, I'm sure would agree. Those of you that have been here for a long, long time, you might just think of it, well, it's just the church. But honestly, <laughs> I mean, if Fritz Lang, the great German director of Metropolis, had designed a church it would have looked like this. It's so awesome. It's like an upside-down galleon sailing through the seas of creation, bringing joy and grace and mystery into the hearts of all who enter it. That's pretty good, you know? Not every church has this kind of really pretty over-the-top aesthetics. Combine that with the organ and the choir, all of your faithfulness. What can't we do? We live in a time when religion and spirituality is at times at, uh, well, not respected as much. 
especially religion, organized religion. And I can understand there are plenty of examples of how organized religion is messed up pretty badly. But the idea that is a sacred inspiration that the founder of our Christian belief, Jesus, was acting the way he did, preaching the way he did, healing the way he did, calling the world in the way he did, was to bring God more fully into manifestation, more fully into creation, to awaken us to the reality that we are part of God. It's not like God's up there and we're down here, and once in a while a, a telegram or a text goes one way or the other. We really are quite close to God. And God is very close to us. In Luke, I, I think it's, well, it's either 16, 17, or 18. So I apologize for not having the scripture right in front of me, but this is one of those moments that's just coming upon me now. Someone asked Jesus, one of the temple people, I think, to trick him up, to trip him up, where is the kingdom? Where is this place you keep speaking about? And Jesus' response roughly is, it's, you say it's here or it's there, but it's within. The kingdom of God is within. This is the greatest mystery that Jesus speaks of again and again. For it is how we remember to do all of the good outward things we are asked to do. To follow the Ten Commandments. To follow the Golden Rule. To remember the teachings of the Sermon on the Mount. Those are all glorious, magnificent teachings. But the way we remember, the way we align ourselves fully with that, is by remembering that the Kingdom of God is within now, there's sometimes a lot of stuff we carry around with us that's in the way of the kingdom of God. Our own concepts, our own confusion, our own hurt, our own resentments or anger about any number of things. We're all flawed, broken people. That's unavoidable. But if we remember that the kingdom of God is within and call on God to continue to heal us, to help us, to help us let go of all the, at times, stuff that's in the way of our relationship with God, in the way of our relationship with our heart, in the way of our knowing the Spirit in this moment that it is with us. If we can remember the kingdom of God is within, then glorious things can happen. And in a sanctuary like this, surrounded by our fellows, who we are part of this community of faith, and we acknowledge that with one another, and we look for the best in one another, and we support one another in good times and bad. Easy to say, hard to do. But that's what we're called to do. Jesus didn't ask us just to come to church on Sundays. In fact, as I recall, he never asked us to come to church on Sundays. <laughs> the third, the fourth, the sixth, or the tenth council, 300 and 400 and 500 years later, asked all that. Jesus asked us to be true to ourselves and true to our God and to let the Father, the holy God that created us, act through us to get out of the way and let God do the work that needs to happen in this world. So let's do that together. I'll do my best. It's setting a high standard, but you know, what else are we going to do? We only have 40, 50, 60, 80, if we're lucky, 100 years in this form, in this life, what better thing is there to do 
than to try and really give ourselves to God and really be the change that the world needs if we can become that thing. I'm going to close, as I almost always will, with a little prayer that to me usually is defined as a poem rather than a prayer. But it, I think it works pretty well. This is from Mechtild of Magdeburg. You know her work, of course, very well. 1207 to 1280. She was one of the Beguines. Um, not Begin the Begin, but uh, the, the Beguines were a group of usually women who were spiritually motivated but did not join a particular convent or, or nunnery. They worked to do their spiritual work on their own or in small communities. So she has this very short poem with three sections. The first section is God speaks to the soul. God speaks to each of us through the soul. And God said to the soul, I desired you before the world began. I desire you now as you desire me. And where the desires of two come together, there love is perfected. Then the soul speaks to God. Lord, you are my lover, my longing, my flowing stream, my love, my son, and I am your reflection. And then finally, God answers the soul. It is my nature that makes me love you often, for I am love itself. It is my longing that makes me love you intensely, for I yearn to be loved from the heart. And it is my eternity that makes me love you long, for I have no end. I noticed in this uh, sanctuary there are many circles imagery on the pews and on the railings up here. The circle is the symbol of eternity. We have eternity to be with God, but we're asked to live eternity now. I look forward to being your pastor. My door is always open. God bless you all. May God lead us onward always in love and grace and justice and in joy. Amen. And now it's time for Holy Communion. So if the communion ushers and pastors would come up, we can, well, we'll see what happens. God is the mystery of divine and human bound together, of power and vulnerability, of crucifixion and resurrection. We celebrate this God who leaps free of all boundaries in love, stretching out beyond any barricades and in mercy, bending deep into fragile human hearts. We set a place at the table for all people, believers and non-believers, Christians, Buddhists, Muslims, Hindus, or native, men, women, gender fluid, rich or poor, with disabilities, all are welcome, no matter who you are. Even if you have deep questions and doubts, you are welcome because God welcomes us no matter who we are, no matter what we are. 
God brought each of us into life and loves us all, for we are children of the divine. And we are celebrate this today as one people, acknowledging our common life, hearts and minds, origin and destination, for we come from God and we go to God in time. God created Jesus so that a miraculous being could come and live among us as one of us so that we could see the incarnation of divinity walking among us in the everyday world, teaching and bringing fellowship and miracles, joy and grace into the lives of many. Through this, we learn that God is with us and that we too are part of the divine plan that when we celebrate the mystery of the sacraments, we begin to understand that we too are part of the divine, siblings with Christ here to bring God's abiding grace, love and justice into creation. On the night when Jesus gathered with his disciples for the last time, they shared a meal, a last supper, celebrating the miracle of Jesus's ministry that brought together many disciples, all different people, all types of people, yet each called by God to serve in ways unique to each one of them, just as continues to happen today. He took bread during the meal, asked for the Father's blessing, broke it, and said, this is my body given for you. It is the body of all creation, for all we see and touch and know generally is form. It is beautiful and wondrous. But later, he took the cup, lifted it to the Father and asked for the Father's blessing and said, this is my blood given for you. It is the blood of the new covenant. It is a new sacrament but it is also the vitality of spirit, the life force that gives life to creation. Bread on its own is a dead thing. You add the spirit, the blood of Christ, and it is alive and living forever. So when we take these two, the bread and the cup, we are reminded of what we are made of, and more importantly, we are renewed in what gives us true eternal life. Both the bread and the cup are offered to you now as sacraments, visible signs of grace, brought forth to awaken your heart and soul to the love of God that pours forth into your life. Come now and taste of each and be blessed once again by the mystery of God. Christ in spirit. We will take the sacrament here and then we will come down and offer the sacraments to all of you. And the ushers will lead you, as I understand it, one row at a time to the front. We will have bread that's been blessed as well as gluten-free option as well as the cup of wine, also known as juice. And for those who prefer, we do have the little cups that have the bread and or the cracker and the juice in the cup. If you prefer to take that instead, please feel free to do so.
drawing closer to one another. We ask for your blessings, Lord. May we serve you faithfully. May we live deeply. May we give generously. May we welcome the Spirit happily. May we radiate love abundantly. And may we walk with hope, joy, and truth gracefully. Amen. For today's benediction, it's nice and short, but I think it, it covers all the basics. May the blessings of God rest upon you. May God's peace abide with you. May God's presence illuminate your hearts now and forevermore. Amen. Go with God. Have a wonderful week. See you outside for some snacks. <laughs>